Hello everyone, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink, and I am back with another Halloween video. And for today's card, I started off with the Echo Park Spider Cobwebs stencil that I showed in a haul video not too long ago that I just love. I love this stencil. I love the detail of it. So I grabbed some purple cardstock from my stash and I taped that to my glass mat with a bit of washi tape. And then I used more washi tape to tape the stencil down over top of this cardstock, just making sure to kind of butt the washi tape like right up to the edges. It makes for a bit of easier cleanup when you do that. And then to cover the stencil, I am using Brutus Monroe's Glow in the Dark Glare Glaze. I had got a bunch of these um, in a recent order, showed them in a haul video. I had a ton of you asking about these. I, of course, was super excited to use the glow in the dark. And I gotta say, if you've ever used a glitter glaze, generally, you know, they're fairly chunky because of the glitter. You know, they go on just fine. This one is definitely more, I would call it creamy. It was more creamy than I expected. It also goes on much more opaque and dry, but dries clear. I kind of expected it to dry more opaque because it's a glow in the dark. But you'll see, you saw in the finished card and you'll see when like this is all dry, it dries a lot clearer than I thought it would. So it goes on like a dream. It I washed the stencil immediately. As soon as I was done there applying it, I tried to you know apply it in a nice even layer. And then I peeled off the stencil, took the stencil and my tool, my little palette knife to the sink and washed them off because glitter glaze is the worst. Any brand, it's really hard to clean after it's fully dry. So I then set that piece aside to completely dry. And then for my main image here, I'm using the Darcy's Sweet Halloween stamp set. There's, you know, a couple of really cute images in the set, but I wanted to use this little potion bottle. So I'm stamping the bottle onto some Nina Classic Crest Solar White 80 pound cardstock with Gina K's Amalgam Ink. And I'm just using my um, Tim Holtz Tonic stamp platform here. It's a travel stamp platform. So I can stamp these um, multiple times because I was like, oh, this piece of cardstock is big enough. I could probably get two or three images easily, which I could. So I would just, you know, adjust the paper and then re-stamp the image here. So once I've got it stamped, I am going to color these in with several different Copic markers. And I was kind of inspired by just the, the purple cardstock I'd started with and the way the glow in the dark paste looked. I was like, why not go with lighter colors? Usually I reach for, you know, much brighter, more intense colors. That's just habit for me, especially at Halloween. You know, really deep orange, bright green, and you know, really bright purple, etc. But today I was like, why not do more pastel sort of colors? Which is something I don't do often when I'm coloring with Copics. It's just, I don't know, it's not something I do. So I did this time because I thought it would just look, you know, different and something fun. So I have the colors there listed on the screen as I'm using them. Doing my usual go-to of just working darkest to lightest because for me it's faster. It blends faster. I don't have to work as much going back and forth with it. So I did, you know, lighter purples and then these more like minty sort of greens for the greens. And then for the oranges, again, kind of lighter, lighter, almost not quite pastel, but just lighter oranges. And um, going in with like basically kind of deeper yellows, really. And then the only real, like the yellow, red, like orange is the 31, which is very, very light, very pastel. So adding those to these bottles and then finally going in, I'm using cool gray markers for this one label here. And after I have everything filled in and colored with my Copic markers, I am going to trim these out with my detail cutting scissors because they're not, they don't have coordinating dies for their stamp sets. So this one, it doesn't really matter at all. It's a very simple image to cut out. So I just went and cut these out with my little Cutter B detail cutting scissors. And then after I have everything cut out, I like to, when I'm doing fussy cutting, I like to use my Memento Tuxedo Black Marker just to go along the edges of all these. I just use the side of the brush tip of the marker just to lightly go along. It coats that white exposed edge of the cardstock. It also coats any little areas where I went, you know, where I didn't cut perfectly with my scissors. So, you know, you'll have the stamp line and then a little bit of white cardstock and it just doesn't look as nice. This completely coats that. I highly recommend this marker. This marker is also really great because it is Copic marker friendly. I, you can see I move fairly quickly though. I don't hold the marker against the cardstock for like, 
you know, an extended length of time because that will, you know, soak in. And I purposely use this marker and I don't use, you know, like a black Copic marker because that you would especially notice it would start like bleeding into the image almost immediately because that's just what Copics do. You know, they soak into the um, cardstock. So I highly recommend the Memento Tuxedo Black Marker. I've had that same one for years and it works like a charm. So I edged all those pieces with that marker. And then for my sentiment, I'm using a sentiment from that same set and was totally in my zone and not looking at my viewfinder. So I didn't realize I was not even on screen when I did this, but stamp the sentiment from the set with VersaFine Onyx Black Ink. I was originally just going to um, heat emboss it with clear, but I wanted it to be a little more intense. So I used black embossing powder melted that and then I die cut it with a stitched circle die. This is one of Simon Says Stamps stitch circle dies. And now you can see the background. It's completely dry. It is much more transparent, very glittery, but much more transparent compared to how it looks when it goes on. So it dries basically transparent, super glittery and glows like a dream in the dark. Super fun. So I trimmed that down to be about four by five and a quarter inches. And then to adhere my vellum circle, I just placed the potion bottles kind of around it and backed the bottles with double-sided foam tape so that they will hold that vellum circle in place without being able to see any adhesive. And then I also used double-sided foam tape on the back of the spiderweb piece before adhering it to my card. And then once I've got that adhered, I wanted to stamp the inside of the card. So I pulled out some oxide inks, some distress oxide inks in colors similar to the Copic colors I use. So I've got Shaded Lilac, Wild Honey, and Twisted Citron Distress Oxide Inks. And I am going to stamp the bottle onto the inside with the oxide inks, just making sure to clean off the stamp between each color so I'm not muddying up my ink pads, let alone the stamp image. So I'm just gonna ink up the stamp, stamp it on the inside, just kind of more around like the perimeter of the inside of the card just to leave more space to write a message. Although I don't have a problem writing over top of anything stamped with oxide inks after they're dry. I usually use a good gel pen anyway when I'm writing to the recipient on the inside of my cards. But stamped it just nicely around the kind of the outside, inking out the stamp. I'd stamp it, ink it up again, stamp it again, and then I would just wipe off the stamp between colors. And I was also wiping it off my glass mat just using my fingers just so that I'm not picking up any of that ink and smudging it or getting it anywhere else in the card because I tend to do that a lot. And then I was kind of brainstorming what I was going to use coming out of the bottles because in my head I was like there's got to be something coming out of them. So I was going to use you know jewels or crystals or whatever. And I remember I have these Studio Cadia iridescent bubbles which I love. Those look like they're glowing on their own. So I kind of sprinkled those throughout and then I also have these adorable little doodlebug um, spider sprinkles. You know, they're self-adhesive with their cute little eyes. Um, I've said this in other videos. I hate spiders. I really do. I, I have like serious phobias when it comes to real spiders. But the exception is Halloween. I like Halloween spiders, fake ones, like paper crafting spiders. <laughs> never real ones, never. I don't care what the situation is. I don't like spiders. But at Halloween, I can craft with them and create little, you know, cards and different things. Doesn't bother me at all but real life is a whole other story. So I sprinkled these little spiders, funny, they're called sprinkles. Anyway, sprinkled those onto the card as well. I thought those went really well, of course, with that stencil. And then um, adhered these iridescent bubbles with multi-medium matte adhesive. And then I coated the bottles with Tonic's Nouveau Aqua Shimmer Pen just the clear one. So it gives them like a bunch of sparkle, which is very subtle until the light hits it. And then it gets like super glittery and then um, added a few more bubbles because why not? <laughs> and then as a final embellishment, I decided to coat the bottles with Nouveau's crystal glaze. So it's just going to give it that nice raised glossy effect. So just added that to all the bottles and then I set this card aside to dry overnight to make sure that everything was completely dry. With the crystal glaze, you can usually, you can tell for the most part, it's something that I've made myself learn over the years to not touch it. But if anything looks even the tiniest bit cloudy, it's not dry. You want to wait until it is completely clear and glossy and then you know it's dry. So and another little tip is to also squeeze a little bit out on a scrap piece of paper when you're working on a project. 
and then let that dry beside your project. And then you can touch the scrap piece before you touch anything else. And if it's dry on the scrap piece, it'll be dry on your card. So that finished off my card for today. Um, I will have a link below to my blog post with links to all the supplies used. I also have a huge Halloween giveaway going on on my blog, which I will also have linked in my blog post below. So check that out if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting on my videos. I really appreciate it. I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.